Richard Pittman, welcome to Talking Pints. Yes, good health to you. Good to see you. Yeah, now, you look good. You've got to shine on your coat. You're OK. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, it was quite right that you were born in Cheltenham, really, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. My As things turned yeah, out. Yeah, love it, love it. But um, academically, at school, yeah. uh, not a great success. No, I, I failed all nine of my O-levels, and I, being cocky little... So yeah. I thought, where it said, in those days, it didn't get percentage, it said so-and-so, F, 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 F. And I thought that meant fantastic! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry about that. Why horse racing? And um, why jump racing? Well, horse racing, because I'm uneducated, and I was small, and I was light enough. Um, I could ride, you know, wh and wh what other things could I have done? So... But do you know, Nigel, it took me four years riding in small five, six horse stables to get a winner. Did it really? And 60 rides in four years. In nothing. I'm amazed I, I then was able to continue. And financially, must have been a heck of a struggle. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, of course it was. Yeah, I mean, you were on a stable lad's wage, you know. But you're always looking, you always think the next horse is going to be the one. Yeah, and in the end, you started to ride very, very good horses. But as a profession, as a job, as a game to be in, being a jump jockey, I mean, I think you're all crackers. I mean, to just talk us through some of the injuries that you had over the years. Well, a pretty nasty one was a star fracture of the ankle where it just went poof. I landed running. Now, it's all about horse and rider seeing a stride going into a fence, you see. And the better the rider, John Franken, was outstanding, the further away from the fence he could get his stride pattern right. And I'd had a couple of winners at Sandown Park, and I was going for my third one, so I'm thinking, well, there'll be a picture on the front page, it was Sporting Life in those days, so I wasn't particularly pretty, you know. So I, I got down and started to do that, you see, and get a bit of style on. And the horse, although I got him lined up for a stride, felt me relax, so he relaxed. And he put in a little short step and went sideways, pushed me out of the saddle, and I landed on my one leg in front of him. Mm. At probably 35 miles an hour. Um, and it's star fractured. And yeah, it took so seven silver screws in it, you know, horrible. But shoulders wrenched out, not just fall out, yeah. wrenched out. Most bones broken. But the, probably the potentially worst was concussion. I was a little fat fellow and I used to get concussion. You know, out I'd go, land on the head. And they were going to warn me off uh, if it continued. Really? So even though it happened so fast, a fall, you then, under the guillotine almost, had time, when you're going out, to think, oh, my head. So you'd roll up in a ball before you hit the ground, yeah. and then you'd break your collarbone or dislocate yeah, but, the shoulder but, again. You know. And, you lost, and you, lost, you lost the sight of an eye as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got kicked with two, two feet in the face and reconstructive surgery, and the optic nerve was, was damaged. So, you know... But all this stuff that you're going through, and other jump jockeys are going through, do you suffer with confidence getting back on a horse? No, you love it. The yeah, you moment... are mad, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> but the moment you, you, you're not excited about it, you know, go, go out and do something else. Now, you rode some big winners yeah, as the years went winners, by. Yeah. You know, the King George the Sixth, yeah. and Whitbread and, and things like this. Champion but, I mean, Hurdle, yeah. Yeah, champion. And wonderful races yeah. that you won. But, I mean, the Grand National, this extraordinary oh. race, and you were second a couple of times. Yeah. In the Grand, but one of your rides in the Grand National, even though it's 50 years this year, yeah. is one of the and you know, in 10 days' time, it's the National. And when we see the commentary and read the papers, they will talk about you being on crisp, <laughs> losing by half a length to Red Rum. Yeah, won't oh they? my god, it's like coming out again. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so exciting. The difference why this race has stood the test of time yeah. a Red Rum went on to win three times yeah. and second twice, so. He was a big catalyst in saving the National, because it being sold, or was being sold, to Bill Davis, a property developer. You know, so everyone in racing got together. But we went off in front. He had won the two-mile champion chase. He's now going over four and a half miles. With top weight, you would, anyone with brains would say, right, you put him out the back, as if you were, when you were in your jogging days, you get him behind a bus, you know, and it pulls you along in the vacuum. But he was such an enthusiast. You couldn't do that. Forty runners, Nigel. Yeah. Noise. Cavalry charge. Yeah, and you think you, if you're in behind, you've picked a spot, you're going to jump it, three strides away, <laughs> four horses go across yeah. you, you know. Yeah. So 
the plan was to make the running and slow it down. Oh, usually, if a senior jockey is, is dictating a pace, the others might listen. But Crisp loved jumping and galloping. And you, you, so we set off in the inside where the brave men went. The, the drops were yep. steeper, the turns were shorter, or going around the inside. And he gradually, through quickness of jumping, got his, his lead. And, and coming past the stands for the first time, 25 lengths in front. And that in itself, you know, I'm used to noise and jockey shouting and horses exploding when they hit a fence. There was silence. It was an eerie, eerie mm. feeling. But you see, having got him in a rhythm, <clears throat> I didn't want to break the rhythm. Coming second in the national, famous race. Did you feel, you must have felt pleased with the way you'd ridden, overall. <laughs> no other jockey would. I rode a great race, he gave me a great ride, yeah. until after the last, when he, his, his yeah. stamina had gone. And you were beaten by a great horse. Yes, but Nigel, quite, when, it's like a car running out of petrol, pricking balloon. Once the stamina goes, yeah. the old legs, instead of doing that, are doing that. And even his ears went... <laughs> <laughs> now, ten days' time is the National, I'm going to be there, I can't wait to be there. Um, what have you got for us, uh, Richard Pittman? What do you fancy? Well, rather boringly, because the course has got easier, it's not the fences are, are low, the Beaches Brook is now no drop, yeah. so it's more of a long-staying race, but you've still got to stay four miles and a couple of furlongs. The fences have to be jumped and the 40 runners, so there's still lots of obstacles. Last year's winner, Noble Yates, I think he'll win again. He's gone up £19, but he was third in the Cheltenham Gold Cup yeah. last month, yeah. off level weights, a level-weighted championship, third, running on. He is right. the one to be frightened of. That's the tip of the top, and there is an outsider called Minella Trump at 80-1, to 1 <laughs> yeah. for those who want a political no, bet. He's still an outsider. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, for all the ups and downs of, of, of this career that you clearly loved, but suddenly, one minute, Pittman's the rider, and the next minute, he's on the telly. Yes, and you got yes. this job with the BBC, and you stayed there forever. 37 years, yeah. 37 years. But, uh, you know, in those... You, sorry. you were telling me earlier that you know, your first day there at the Beeb as a commentator, you meet the great Sir Peter yes, Sullivan, who gives you yeah. a piece of advice. Well, he, I mean, he was God in the BBC, you know. He didn't deal with the producer. He went up to the owner, you see. Um, or the, the boss, head, yeah. head of it, yeah. Um, I went up and said, uh, Peter, um, you know, very humbly, could you give me some advice, please? Because I was a jockey, uneducated jockey, one day, four days later, I've got a microphone. He said, yes, Richard, um, keep talking rubbish, just like you did as a jockey, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of us, millions of us are sports fans. You know, some, some of us love all sports, some like individual sports. What is it, and he did it for all the what is it that makes a good sports commentator. You know, you stood the test of time, you were good at it. What, what are the qualities? Oh, you've got to know your horses and the colours. I watch American jumping now, it's pathetic. Eight runners in a race and they don't, they don't see the fallers, don't pick them up, you know. Over here, 40 runners. Yeah. And Peter O'Sullivan used to hand over to John Hamner going to the first. 40 runners, with the sun behind them, they looked like 40 black blobs. Yeah. And he had to identify them. And often at the first you'd get 12 fallers or yeah. yeah, yeah. So, homework. Homework and, and a way of speaking? Yes, but more colour of the horse. You know, there's a, yeah. a, a grey horse in yeah. it this year. A lot of ladies will want to back a grey horse. But also, style of jockey. You know, some will ride with a level back, others mm. be upright a bit. Mm. You know, some have their backside in the and air. You've got to know your stuff. How is it, Richard Pittman, for the boy that failed nine O levels, that in the last few years you've produced books. Oh, well, that's easy enough. We've Novels? Put all, yeah, but we, I haven't written one for 25 years. I could only sell 20,000, which a lot of people would be delighted to yeah. sell. But it was a lot of work when I'm doing other things. I have actually two books in my desk drawer now. One right. is being, uh, being illustrated, and the other one was for a film. And uh, they loved it until it went about four f floors up. And then the guy in charge said, mm, <laughs> I want a few more twists here. I want a, a girl rider who's been abused oh, right. and is from an African country. So I said, look, I, I, I don't want to research this. So I, I've, I can make that into a book. But you've got more books to go. And a final thought, Richard Pittman, you, you, you were recently a kidney donor. What, what, what prompted that? 
A friend of mine had had two in his life and I, he wouldn't take a live one. And I saw when he got one from an accident, I saw what it did to him. It changed the man's life. And I thought, well, if it can do that for my friend Tim Gibson, I can give it to someone else. Most satisfying thing I've ever done, apart from meeting you. Well, that's very, very good of you. Thank you for joining me and I will see you. Can, uh, can I just or, give or, you one thing? Oh, here we go. There are two horses. If you go by names... Yep. No, but one is... Like you, Mr. Incredible. Right. And the other one is how you used to be the big dog. <laughs> <laughs> we are not here to give advice on gambling. <laughs> Richard Pittman, thank you, thank very, you much very much indeed. Much.